In this video, you'll learn exactly how to make a simple custom lower third infusion. Here's what we're making. It's just a nice little animated panel with a little shine on it, animates in and out, and building this is gonna teach you a lot about fusion. My name's Casey, I teach content creators how to use fusion. I also have a free video course, the Fusion Survival Guide, it's down in the description below. More on that later, let's jump into the tutorial. So in this video, we're gonna be designing this graphic. And in a future video, we'll take a look at how to make this a reusable template. But this is just the design part, okay? When we make a overlay like this, generally, you go to the media pool and right click in the empty space and make a new fusion composition. I'll just go ahead and click create. And now we'll have this fusion composition that lives in the media pool. This is a better way than building this effect on the footage because you can take this and move it around and adjust the length and put it on different clips and everything like that. It's independent from the clip, right? And you know, you can take it off and put it on really easily. So I'm gonna start by double clicking on our new fusion composition here. That's the one we just made that's empty. And that'll give us a blank fusion composition like this. The first thing that I like to do to start with is to drag a background node down. So we grab this background node, drag it in, and then take the output of this node, that's the gray square, and connect it to the yellow input of the media out. Anything that we connect to the media out is what we're going to see. And this background, if I select this and go over here to our colors, I'm gonna take this alpha down all the way. That'll give us a clear background and it will size our composition to 1920 by 1080 because that's what our timeline settings are set at. So now we have kind of our blank canvas. Let's go ahead and draw a color, which again, I'm gonna use a background for. So I'll take this background and just drag this in. And if I wanna preview my background on this left viewer, I can select the background and hit one on the keyboard. That's gonna bring that up so I can preview things. And let's go ahead and make this like, uh, we made red last time, let's make like a blue or maybe a purple, yeah, purple. So now we have this nice purple. I can rename this background by selecting it and hitting F2 on the keyboard. And I'll just type in a new name, we'll just say purple. And now I have my purple node and my background, we'll rename this clear. I'm gonna take my purple background and merge it over my clear canvas here. There are a few ways to do that. One way is I can grab this merge node right here, just drag this in, and then take the output of my purple and put that into the green input of the merge, and that will do it. A quicker way to do that is just to grab the output of my purple and drag it over the output of the clear canvas right over that white square, and that will automatically make a merge node and connect the purple to the foreground and the clear to the background. Okay, so now we have purple over clear. Of course, we just see purple because it's the same size. Here in the second viewer, this is what everyone is going to see. I'll just go ahead and close our first viewer by clicking in our second viewer and then clicking this viewer button. That's just going to show us one viewer so we aren't confused. And now I want to take this purple and I wanna mask it because I only want this to be a little rectangle kind of towards the bottom of the screen. So to add a mask to something, I can grab any of these masks up here that are right under the transform controls. I'll grab this rectangle mask and I'll drag that down. That'll make a rectangle mask. And I can take the output of that mask and put that into the blue input of the purple. And what that's going to do is generate this purple background only inside of the mask. Okay, so we'll take this mask and we can resize it and everything. And I'll just put this kind of down here for now, something like that. We can make it whatever size we think is appropriate, maybe somewhere in there. So now we have our little purple solid just sitting there ready for some text. Let's make some text over this. To do that, I can grab the text plus tool, which is the third tool over from the left on our toolbar here. I can grab this and just drag it in like this. And kind of the same thing. I'm gonna merge this over this merge one by grabbing the output of text one and dropping that on the white square. That's gonna make another merge. And so we essentially have three layers here, our clear, our purple, and our text. But where is our text? We don't have any text. Well, if I select text, I can go up here to the inspector and I can type my text. So now that's placed our text, but we need to move it around a little bit. We can do that right here in the controls for our text plus. We can adjust the size and the font and everything. If we go over to layout, we can adjust the center, which is also the same as just grabbing this little doohickey here. And I'll move this over like this, okay? And I think we'll go back to the text controls here. And for a horizontal anchor, let's pick the left side. So that's going to align the text to this point right here. So we'll kind of put this point here. And I wanna make sure that we're inside of the title safe. It's maybe not that big of a deal these days, but still good practice. So I can bring up the guides for my viewer by hitting Control G when I'm clicked in my viewer. And here we have our title safe controls. This is just to make sure that the text doesn't get cut off by somebody's old TV or something like that. And I like to put this just right inside that inner box. That looks good. 
Now that we have our text placed, I can place our rectangle a little better. So grab our rectangle like this, and we have some adjustments here we can make on screen. So I don't know, something like that. That looks nice. Maybe we want to change our font. I'll change this font to something I like. I really like uh, Poppins. That's a nice font. Poppins bold. That looks good. And yeah, okay, that works. I can go ahead and hide my guides by clicking on here and hitting Control G. And I'll zoom in a little bit just so we can see what we're doing. And now let's adjust the design of this a little bit. One thing I like to do is add a drop shadow to this shape, gives it a little bit of definition. And we can do that a variety of different ways. Probably the easiest way is just to select our purple solid right here. I can hold down shift and hit spacebar, and that'll bring up my select tool panel where I can search for any tool in Fusion. And I'll start typing shadow, S-H-A-D-O-W. And we have a couple different effects. We have drop shadow and shadow. I'm just going to click shadow because that's the built-in fusion effect and I'll hit add. And now I have some controls over here and I'll just push this shadow offset to the right and down a little bit. You can soften it. You can do all kinds of stuff. Maybe we'll soften it just a little bit and maybe we'll take the alpha down for this shadow color just a little bit, maybe halfway or so. Now we have this nice shadow coming in, makes it feel a little bit more real. And we could also do that for the text if we want to, but I'll leave that up to you. So now we have our basic layout for our graphics here. Now it's time to add some fanciness, add a little bit of animation. One thing that I think looks nice is when there's a little shine that goes across an object, you know, like it's shiny, it's glimmering, right? Again, this is something we could do in a lot of different ways, but one way that we could easily do this would be to grab this purple solid and the rectangle. I'll just move this up a little bit because we're gonna add another node right here. And the node I'll add is just a color correction node. Just grab this color corrector and bring it down and just drop it right between these nodes when it turns blue and yellow, and that will run this purple through a color corrector. Now, nothing's happening so far because we haven't adjusted it, but if I move this around, it will adjust the color of my little box there. I'll just reset that by clicking this little reset button up here. And what I think I wanna do is I'll just grab this gain and push it up a little bit. That's just going to brighten it a little. And I'll also just take this and maybe push it a little bit warm. It's nice to kind of tint things a little warmer if you're going to brighten them with a graphic design. But now I wanna limit this color correction to just happen during part of this. So we're, we're gonna kind of draw the shine on here. So a way to do that would be to grab a rectangle mask again. I'll just grab this rectangle mask and put it over here to the left. And I'll take the output of the rectangle mask and just drop it on the color corrector. What that's gonna do by default is connect it to the blue input, which is always our mask input. And so what I'm telling it to do now is to do the color correction, but only do it where this rectangle is. So I'll select the rectangle and now I can move this around and that color correction is only gonna happen inside of that rectangle. So I can adjust the size of this rectangle and I can even rotate it. So we have this little shine. I could even go to my mask controls and grab the soft edge and push that up a little bit. And now we have this nice little subtle shine that we can move back and forth and we have a little shiny thing going on. So to animate this, all we have to do is figure out where we want it to start in time, so at frame zero, and then where we want it to start in space, and I'll have it start kind of over here off screen, and then we're gonna set a keyframe. So a keyframe is just telling something where to be at a certain time, okay? So at frame zero, we want the center of this to be right where it is right now. So if we look over here, we have the center at negative 0.05, 0.21. And I'll click on this little diamond and that will let Fusion know that that's where I want this to be at this certain time. Now we can move forward in time on our little time slider here. And let's say, I don't know, 15, 20, something like that, 20 frames in, we want this to move over like this. And we'll just grab it and drag it over like that. So it sweeps past this as we go to frame 20. And we don't have to hit this icon again. It'll automatically change it and animate in between these two places, which is really cool. So I can just click on that and it just animates across. Oh, looks so good. Got our little shine going and it's not that hard to do. All right, so this is looking pretty good, but let's have this animate on as well. We don't want this just to appear. We want it to slide in or something like that. Let's go ahead and use a similar kind of mask, this rectangle mask, and I'll drag this down below our merge. And I can connect this to our merge like this. And again, it's connecting to the blue input. The input color is very, very important here, okay? And that purple is only gonna show up under this mask. Now, the reason why it's masking the purple and the shadow and everything all at once is because everything that we've built so far, except for the text, is plugged into this merge. And this rectangle mask is telling the merge to only do its job inside of the rectangle. And the merge's job is to put all of this stuff over the clear background. 
So if it's not inside of the mask, it's not putting that stuff over the clear background, right? So what we can do is animate this mask and look, it looks like it kind of grows out of nothing when we animate it, right? Now we could just keyframe the center of this mask just like we did, and there'd be nothing really wrong with that. But I think it's nice to actually put the middle of our mask just off screen like this and to change the width of our mask to reveal what we want to reveal. I can't quite make this wide enough with the slider, so I can do like 1.5 here and that'll make it wider and that'll change the sliders range and so that I can have a little bit more room to move my slider. And I want this right edge to be just beyond where this shadow falls, okay? So now if I want to completely wipe this, all I have to do is go to a frame that I want this to be completely on, so maybe frame 10, and I'll add a keyframe to our width. And then here at zero, I'll just take the width all the way down like that. So now as I play this back, it comes across, animates on, and then we have the shine coming on after that. It works really nice. Oh, cool. We're almost done here. The one thing that we're going to change here is we don't want this to animate on and then stop immediately. We want it to kind of slow down before it stops. So the way that we can do that is we'll open up a new panel here in Fusion. That's our spline panel. So in the upper right, we have this little button that says spline. If I click on that, that's going to open up our spline panel down here. And this is a way for us to control how things are animated. All we have to do is select what we want to adjust, which I'm going to select the width for rectangle three. And here we have a graph of how this is animated over time. So it starts at zero and then it goes at a constant rate all the way until our next keyframe and then it stops. We don't want it to stop so suddenly. So I can select this keyframe and I can grab the little handles here and I can kind of soften out how this animates. So I can grab this and kind of move it out like this so it's a nice soft hill. So it ends really gradually. Look at the difference. So that comes in and it's not such a jarring stop. It's It kind of slows down before it stops. That's a really nice way to animate pretty much anything. When you're making motion graphics, you want it to kind of slide to a stop. Okay, so that's great. I can go ahead and close our spline panel now. And now we have this animating on like that. Oh, so beautiful. But there's a problem. Our text is not animating on. Why is that? Well, because our text is hooked to its own merge and it doesn't have a mask that's being animated to reveal it. So we can fix that really easily by just grabbing this mask and taking the output of it and putting that into the mask input of this other merge. And so it's masking two things at the same time, which is one of the really cool things about working with nodes. So now that animates on and it slides that in and it reveals the text and the background all at once without having to redo any of that work. Oh, very nice. If we want this to animate off, we can go kind of towards the end here and I'll go maybe 10 frames from the end. So 110 or so. And again, I'll just add a keyframe to our width. And then at the very end, we'll take the width all the way down to zero. So now this animates off as well. So animates on, holds, and then animates off. So we have the basic design here for our graphics. So if I go to my edit page and I grab this fusion comp that we've been working with, I can grab this and drag it down and put that in the track over my footage. And as I play it back, it comes in with that nice little animation. And then towards the end, it animates off as well. Very cool. Now, the way that we built this, if we grab the edge of this and extend it out, it's still going to end at about five seconds because we haven't told it to be smart with the length of things. That's a problem that we're going to tackle in another video. So this is a pretty simple design. What would you add to this design if you were going to make it just a little bit better? Let me know that in the comments. And hey, if you're learning Fusion, make sure to check out our Fusion Survival Guide. It's a free video course. It's available right down below. There's a link to it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this lower third wasn't too low for you, but that you eat a third piece of pizza because it's such a party. <laughs> that was a little bit of a stretch, wasn't it?